this week's parsha is parsha Kitisa. It is a uh, not the most cheerful parsha, admittedly. Uh, at the crux of it really lies the Masa Egel, the sin of the golden calf. Um, and there's a lot to talk about here. We'll try to focus on the positive, even though there's a lot of negativity to speak about, because that incident was a total disaster for the Jewish people, and we're still paying the consequences. Um, let's focus on the, what, what positive we can take out from here. So this is going to be uh, focusing on the Gemara and Brachot. Uh, it's the fifth parak. Um, it's Lamed Bet, both Aleph and then Bet. We're going to be speaking about two ideas, so let's go. So we're in a Sefer Shemot, of course. And we'll start on uh, 32, verse 10. So it says, Hashem said to Moses, I've seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people, and now desist from me. Let my anger flare up against them, and I shall annihilate them, and I shall make you a great nation. That is the first part. And then in the repeat, in, uh, in Dvarim, chapter 9, verse 14, or rather, let's say verse 13, again, Hashem said to me, because Moshe is the one writing the Dvarim, it's called, it's called the Mish, uh, Mishnah Torah, because Moshe is effectively repeating what came before and just reiterating. So Hashem said to me, saying, I've seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Sounds familiar, we just saw that in Shemot. Release me. This is God speaking now. Release me, and I shall destroy them and erase their name from under the heavens, and I shall make you a mightier, uh, more numerous nation than they. So the Gemara wants to comment about these two very puzzling uh, statements. That is to say, in Shemot it says, uh, uh, Hashem says, And now desist from me. Okay. And in Dvarim it says, we hear Hashem saying, Release me, and I shall destroy them and erase their name. So to this, the Gemara is very focused and wants to know what's going on. What does this mean, release me and desist from me? So to that, uh, the Gemara says magnificently that the instant that, I mean, think of where Moshe is coming from. Moshe has just helped lead the, lead the Jewish people out of Egypt. God has just smashed, smashed Egypt with ten plagues. Wonders and glory, right? He's taken the, Jew, the Jewish people out of Egypt. He's led them through the desert. He split the sea for them and crushed the Egyptian army in the sea. He then let, uh, continued to lead them through the desert, fought Amalek for them, fed them in, in the desert, gave them water in the desert. And then, of course, there is Matan Torah. Forty days after this, the Jewish people descend into idol worship. That's just it's incomprehensible. What is, what is Moshe going to say? There, there's no justification for that. And so Moshe was silent until God said something key. That is to say, he said, Hanichali, desist from me. Or, specifically what the Gemara picks up on is, it says, it says, Heref me many, release me. Now if someone tells you to release them, that means that you still have a grip. And the instant that Moshe hears, that he still has the possibility of, uh, of appealing for the Jewish people. That is to say, God says, leave me. If someone says, leave me, that means he still acknowledges your presence. You're there. God doesn't say, I'm going to destroy them. I don't care what you say. He says, no, leave me. That is to say, you still have a grip. And from that, we see what's the very next pasuk. Right? And now, desist from me. Let my anger flare up against them, and I shall annihilate them, and I shall make you a great nation. What's Moshe's response the instant he hears that, Mo that he still has a, has a handle on Hashem? Moses pleaded before Hashem his God and said, Why, Hashem, should your anger flare up against your people, whom you have taken out of the land of Egypt with great power and a strong hand? Amazing. We see, we see Moshe immediately comes to appeal on behalf of the Jewish people. Regardless of how bad everything looks, he hears that, that he has an opening and he takes it. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. But then... There's another idea I want to speak about when it comes to the Masa Egel. And this is on the Bet Amun based in, uh, in Brachos. And it's as follows. I actually heard this, uh, this idea from Rabbi Sonnenblick in Dallas, and uh, it really struck me and it stayed with me. I heard this like four and a half years ago. So we were talking, and I told Rabbi Sonnenblick, uh, I mentioned that I'm, I'm, I'm quite a big reader, and I really like fiction novels. And one of the reasons why I like fiction novels is because you really seem to get a sense of, uh, of, of humanity. Like you really get a sense of other people's weaknesses. You see the beauty of, of what the human personality looks like. When a person reads a novel, one of the things that they really enjoy about it is even when they see people who are like 
ama amazing people. They're heroes. They're people of exceptional, um, with exceptional characters. Even so, they have uh, they have flaws, and we help, and we're able to relate to these characters. Maybe not even in spite of those flaws, but perhaps because of them, because we know that we have flaws, and so do these even amazing people. Or alternatively, we see this horribly evil man, and then we see again that they had certain weaknesses that led them into their evil, and we can sympathize with them through that. We're like, wow, you know, I hope to never do that, but I could see how how those experiences led led them to that, and that's something that I really appreciated about literature. And I think I noted that perhaps, you know, you don't really see that so much in, uh, in the Torah. And so Rabbi Sanabwe brought my attention to this amazing Gemara. And it goes as follows. So the Gemara quotes a Pasuk where, uh, where it starts like this, isha ula. Will a woman forget her child? And then the Gemara continues to say, we'll just, we'll translate it and explain as we go along. So Amar HaKadosh Baruch so God says, Klum eshkach olad elim recham she So Hashem says, I will not forget all of the sacrifices that you offered for me in the Midbar. Amr Lafanov, so this Isha, this woman who won't forget her son, said to God, Hashem, Since there's no forgetfulness in front before you, then perhaps you'll never forget the Masa Egel. Maybe you won't forget the sin of the golden calf. That's something we want you to forget. We don't you remember the Masa Egel. That was uh, the Jewish people at our worst. So what does Hashem say? Amr and it's quoting the same passage as Hatishkah Isha Ula. It says, Gam Ela Tishkachna. No, these I'll forget. So Hashem promises to forget the Masa Egel. Now the Gemara responds, Amr Lafanov. So she responded to him, Ribbon Oshal Olam. Hashem, Hoyl the Ashikach of the Fnech is Echwadecha. Since you, there is forgetfulness in front of your throne of glory, Shematishkach Li Masa Sinai. Since you can forget, maybe we forget the fact that I stood at Sinai. And now Hashem again quotes from that same Pasuk, Amr Lah. V'anochi as in Anochi Hashem Elokecha, the Ten Commandments, Masa Sinai, that I won't forget. Now this is a very puzzling Gemara. What does that mean? So we're worried, you know, God says I'll never forget the sacrifices, then the, the, the woman retorts, but then if you don't forget anything, then you'll remember the Masa Ega, we don't want to remember that. So if that God says, uh, no, that, that I'll forget. And then she says, well, since you'll already forget, then maybe you'll forget the fact that we stood at Sinai to begin with. And to that, God says, no, I won't forget that. What's going on? Very strange. Rav Sanabek explained as follows. He said, in what context is God going to remember the Masa Egel? After all, the Masa Egel represented, as we, as we mentioned earlier, the, the depths of the depravity that the Jewish people could sink to. It was literally our worst moment in history. The worst. Nothing could get worse than that. And God obviously remembers that. But this Gemara tells us, in what context does God remember that uh, the, the depths to which we sunk? And so that it says, when I remember the Masa Egel, I'll also remember Masa Sinai. Those same Jewish people who sank so low were the same Jewish people, were my people, who also stood at Sinai. They're the Jewish people who accepted the Torah. So whenever God remembers us at our worst, He also automatically promises to remember us at our finest. And that's something to take out of this week's parasha. Shabbat shalom and uh, Purim Sameach. Enjoy Purim.